Right, good afternoon. And welcome back to another Voron V0. Well, it's like half of V0 now. Upgrade stream for a bunch of modifications. And um, we are sponsored today. So here's a quick message from our sponsors. A big thank you to Big Tree Tech, Bontech, and Printy Please for sponsoring live streams on Vector 3D. You can find out more via the links in the video description. There you go. So those three sponsors, thank you very much. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We've got quite a lot to do. So at the end, well, basically last stream, we obviously stripped down a good portion of the printer. Most of the frame, all of the frame is still intact. We've not had to deal really with any nuts yet, which is good because dealing with nuts can be a little bit of a pain. Hello, hello, hello to everyone arriving also. Also on Twitch today, so hello to Twitch viewers as well. Finally got Twitch working again, because that was broken for ages. Uh, yeah, we did a bunch of assembly, disassembly rather, and we encountered some issues with the bed, the Kirigami folded sheet metal. Um, mostly worked through that now. It's basically just manufacturing tolerance of the folding is not super great, so, with a bit of manual tweaking, we've managed to, well, I've managed to separate the plates a little bit. So they're a little bit further apart and they should fit this piece now. So that fits okay. And there's not really no closer until it's <laughs> larger, is it? So yeah, that, that piece should fit in there now. We might have to enlarge the holes a bit. I'm not sure, see, see how we go. It's definitely a lot closer than it was because before it didn't even fit. Uh, I've also printed these TPU spaces. These are one millimeter thick. Um, previously, when using rigidly mounted stuff to a linear rail, you come across all sorts of tolerance issues. These linear rails tend to be very, very precise and anything that's off by even a tiny smidgen, you tighten it down and the whole thing just locks up. But having some TPU spaces, although it's not, like they're not really very flexible, they're mostly solid. I mean, they're solid plastic. They're just like 95 sure hardness. So they have, from my experience, like a tiny, tiny bit of give, and that can be the tiny bit that you need for everything to not lock up. So I don't know if we'll need them. We might not, we might just be absolutely fine without them, but I've made them just in case. So hopefully, hopefully we don't. Uh, what else is there to cover? I don't think much. I think we can sort of just get on with it. As you can see, I didn't end up painting it, didn't really have time and didn't have any suitable black paint. So we're going with the silver and we just hopefully won't see it too much by the time we've finished everything. Um, I think we are pretty much ready to mount this though. We've got to get this on here. Order of operations now is the difficult bit. Um, ba, 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 ba. This got to go on here with some screws through here. Uh, we do have to though try and get these, one of these screws threaded into the plastic, which I gave up on yesterday because it wasn't super easy. But hopefully we can manage it today. Where is everyone today? <laughs> I've just noticed the title is also wrong on the uh, Twitch stream because Twitch just doesn't update properly. Of course it doesn't. Fantastic. Let me just update that quickly so it's correct. And then we shall carry on. Oh. There we go, that's that fixed. Not many people watch through Twitch anyway, but you know, it's there. It's always an option. 
So I'm going to try and drill out this hole just a bit by forcing a drill bit through it. Uh, we don't want anything too big because we need that screw to hold reasonably well. Eight millimeters, that should be enough. Can't remember which screw was jammed in here before. I think there's only two lengths here, so one or the other should be okay. All right, that looks pretty reasonable. That was 2.8 millimeters. 2.8, 2.9 is normally about right for threading machine screws into plastic. <laughs> Not quite there. <laughs> Intended use, but it does work. Let's uh, see if we can get a better view of this. Um, <laughs> oh, that's weird, isn't it? You can see, because this lead screw is pointing straight upwards, you can see how squiff the camera is. That's bizarre. Although, Oh no, I just suppose as soon as it's under the camera, but when it's over here, it's an angle. Anyway, let's screw in some of these. Not quite correct order of operations and everything, but. Hopefully close enough. Uh, no painting happened. We did not do the painting in the end. Didn't have the appropriate paint and we didn't really have time to go and get some from anywhere else. So we're just going with the plain metallic look. So that goes on there. That will then mount to there. Let's grab a few screws and see how easily this mounts. What size are these holes? Oh, they're so tight, they're so needlessly tight. I think I might drill out the holes on here. Because I think that's going to be... Uh, I suppose we don't need to now. We'll give it a go. See what works. If it doesn't work, I think drilling the holes out to an immoral... Uh, slightly looser tolerance will help significantly. Obviously, I'm going to need to take this off to actually assemble the bed to the printer. I just want to see if everything fits as intended before we assemble it into the printer, because I think it's going to be a bit more difficult to do in the printer than here. So. By the way, for anyone that didn't realise yesterday, um, Richard Skinner is the owner of 3D, uh, Printy Please. So, this is, he is who I've got this bed for. This screw is not going in. Domenico, pro tip for anyone printing the Crystal Dragon. <laughs> Sharp. I wouldn't worry about the rat rig IDEX. I think it's it's not going to. It's not going to come quickly. It's going to be months and months before that's available, so I wouldn't worry about it interrupting any other orders or things. The amount of time we've waited for one printer 
uh, we can be pretty sure you'd be waiting the same amount of time again for a new one, so I wouldn't stress about it too much. Okay, that's sort of in, it's not super tight. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, the w oh, you can't really see much at the moment. The, the wiggle at the moment is just because I'm not tightening the nut, so I'm not too worried about that, but. Okay, okay. That's fine. So let's remove this again. Aluminium would be quite a good option, I think. And then you'll probably be a bit easier to bend as well. Not that, that matters too much. But anodized, anodized black would look nice. They do have to be really well finished though, so it can be quite expensive. Anodizing is one of those finishes that really highlights any defects. So you need a really good finish before you anodize. Powder coat is generally a bit cheaper, but I think the tolerance on these holes is the most needed. Okay, so the next thing is to get this mounted back on here. I can't remember exactly what screws I used to do that, so got um there we go oh there's beds here oh no that's not it that is it. it's the motor mount that we want so eight and six to mount that Eights for there, and eights for there. That's not an eight. That looks like an eight. That's an eight. That's an eight. Um, motor first, I think. Or do we wanna... The question is, can we adjust the rails with the motor in position? Just give that... Oh. Okay, well that doesn't go through there, so I need to take this off. That was close. Okay, so we can still use the jigs with this in place. So let's
Oh dear, that blue screen, blue screen of death is the worst. BGTV is better Twitch third party emote add-on. Ah, okay. Oh, the Kirigami bed is stainless steel. So quite heavy. Oh, that didn't go in. The Dickens? Right, let's switch to... The, uh, the ball head um, Allen keys can be really nice for doing certain jobs, but they can also be a bit of a pain because you can't direct a screw very well. This does not seem long enough. Okay, that's on. That's missed. Oh, how long did this take me before? I feel like this is going to be a hell of a job getting these in. Oh no, a nut's come out. Oh no, where's that from? Oh, balls. I have no idea where that comes from. Oh, did anyone see it fall out? What does that miss? Hmm. Oh, that's another one come out. Where are they all coming from? Oh, these. Oh, poop. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so they're coming from these back mounting rails that hold the, um, the back panel, the electronics panel in place. So it looks like... Three each side, there should be. There's currently zero here. I'm not sure I'm going to stop these coming out again. I guess the good thing is They're also quite easy to put back in. So I see if I turn the printer up vertically, this will just kind of fall straight out the bottom. <laughs> oh, shoot. Can I jam one in the bottom a little bit? There we go, that's what I want to do. That way, when I turn it up, they won't fall out. Yes, success. Getting oil, greasy stuff all over my hands. What was I doing? Oh, yes, mounting this.
Oh yes, I could just add a screw into it. Which is a good idea. going to fit now. Just. I feel like that's probably a bit close. Um, it's all right. Let's put some temporary screws. Probably would have been smarter to grab them from the pile of screws that are not being used, but it doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to loosen off this touch. So I need to try and position these rails as best I can. This needs to be even smaller for this. All right, there we go. That's a bit of wiggle room on that one. Do the same over here. Now we've got two guides. So these side are positioning the rail relative to the extrusion and this side positions this, this rail relative to this rail. So that should put the distance exactly correct. What would be better if we uh, get the biggest distance possible? So push down this, shouldn't really push them but 
as long as it's not plugged into a driver it should be okay. Let's just move the stoppers to match at the end. So this should now be in an ideal position such that we can just screw this on really easily. Who knows? So we've got somewhere, where did I put them? Some correct length screws. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. We half an hour in already. Right, four screws to start off with. I'm going to need ball end driver for this because they're all in weird angles. screws barely go through these holes. In fact, that one does not go through that hole. I'm going to drill these holes out. I think it's the only way we're going to be able to mount this. easy to drill, especially not without hurting myself. Hum, 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 hum. I'm going to try it without the TPU spaces first, see if it binds up, and then if it does, then I'll put them in. Um, these are going to be M2, so I would normally do 2.5 millimeter holes for, for that. Uh, maybe it's a bit much, but let's go 2.4. Should still be plenty. This is like how not to do drilling.
This really needs oil. I can't believe I'm doing it. It's literally screeching at me. Oh, it's horrible. You can tell it's been laser cut because it's, it's ended up getting super hard. was interesting. Just dropped a whole load of nice metal filings all over my chair and floor. So I'm sure I'll have some nice metal splinters later. Ouch. That's some I've got already. file, a needle file, because deburring, there's not really access with a deburring tool, so we're just going to file off this top face here. It'll leave a bit of a mark, but... Hopefully we don't have to do that to any more holes. goes in nice and easily now. Question is, can we do the other side? Oh. Fingers crossed. Oh, was it going to make it? Sorry. 
Okay, so let's try some more screws, see where we get to. These screws are so tiny. I'm actually going to need tweezers to hold them. Okay, get in there. Get some more screws. that new subscriber welcome James McKenna So that's all the screws in, but they're all loose at the moment. As you can see, it wobbles quite a bit. I'm not sure quite how to get it level. Maybe against this plate at the bottom is going to be a good option. What can I stick in that gap that's going to be square? Some of the previous extrusions might be quite a good option. Somewhere in the CFG of the bed ish. Another new subscriber. Now try to. It's all gritty now. 
I mean, it moves, that's pretty good, but... I made loads of new subscribers. I'll pop it up at once. pretty good but it's stiff it's just not I don't think it's flat either oh dear I can just feel it grinding on there. All right, I'm going to try these TPU spacers. It's worked for me in the past and it wasn't too wobbly, so I'll give it a go here. You will of course have to tell us afterwards if these mods are worth doing from the start. Difficult, but I'll do my best. I think we lost two, four, six, seven screws on the right. I think we lost a bit of the flatness in the bending I was doing yesterday, because I did a bit more after the stream. Yeah, that's not quite as straight as it was. Mm. Okay, well, hopefully these spaces will help make up for that maybe a little bit. Let's try it. Uh, we're gonna probably need some longer screws, I think. I'm not gonna have much engagement. Okay, let's I'm gonna put a spacer on each side and then we'll increase the length of the screws by two millimeters. Attaching to the lead screw won't um, help the kind of fluidity of the movement. If there's already friction, adding more constraints and it's not going to help.
How do my spacers not fit? I went, literally measured it from the CAD. Oh, this is ridiculous. How? Oh, because I'm going to the wrong holes, that's why. I keep thinking it's these holes in here, but it's not. So, there's TPU space on one side. And nicely, it also helps hold all the screws. Oh. And then hopefully we can stick this one on this side. And that will also hold with the screws. The bed isn't rigid enough. No, the, the bed is too rigid, or very rigid. Definitely still not ideal, really. But I think it's better. It doesn't feel significantly less rigid and it seems to move Pretty smoothly. So I think we're going to keep those. Let's move this lead screw mount to a line. these first and then we'll go tighter once we've got them all in.
Mhm. I've not considered a reuse of the extrusions from the bed actually, that's a nice thought. Could have included them in a, a new mod, couldn't I? But alas, I have not done that. Okie dokie, um, I've just realised, oh no, I think I need to take the whole thing off again. Uh, here needs to go this to mount the drag chain boy. Uh, where is that? I must have put it away in the box. That fits that, but that fits that, but that fits the uh, check. Hopefully we can fit it from the outside rather than from the inside. Oh, it's still loads of space. Um, what's it called? So this points in that way. So that goes there and those now through here. So some more. Maybe in three by eight is probably good. Uh, and then we've got to put this on here. So probably in three by six or something for this, isn't it? So that can screw that, that's nice. So then we need to make sure we've got the cables routed through it. Uh, so we don't need to do it right now. We need the bed on next. We also need to make sure that the end stop fits appropriately. through the top here.
I've just remembered another thing and another thing. Oh damn, loads of things. How the hell did we mount this? Okay. That looks like it would mount. Should we go back to top view? What's a good idea is to do a quick sponsor segment. So it's two minutes long and we'll be back afterwards. This video is sponsored by Big Tree Tech, Bontech, and Printy Please. The SKR Pico is a brand new control board from Big Tree Tech that, despite its tiny size, packs quite the punch making it an ideal fit for a small form factor 3D printer like the Voron V0.1. A Raspberry Pi RP2040 chip is used as the main controller with TMC2209 stepper drivers for the X, Y, Z and E axis with two plugs to support dual Z printers. The built-in heatsink gives a computer motherboard kind of styling and helps to cool the drivers a little bit too. Clipper has been considered in the design as well, a TPS 5450 gives up to 5 amps continuous current at 5 volts for a Raspberry Pi, and the included cable makes for easy installation via UART. There's also a replaceable fuse, thermistor short circuit protection, Japanese Murata capacitors, USB-C, and it matches the Raspberry Pi's footprint. You can get yours or find out more via the link in the description. The LGX Lite is a tiny new extruder from Bontech, which implements their large gear design to provide increased filament grip. On the top, the filament pretension lever provides consistent and repeatable filament engagement, while the open sides gives access to all the gears, allowing for easy maintenance. Four mounting patterns using M3 nuts provides plenty of mounting options, so its compact, light design and use of NEMA 14 stepper motor make it a great contender for direct drive on high performance 3D printers. Find your local reseller via the link in the description. UK based Printy Please specialises in parts and upgrades for 3D printers like the Voron V0 and 2.4. The Kirigami bed, sun on fans, titanium backers and spherical bearings are just some examples of the range of specialist parts available. Check out their shop via the link below. So it's just pointed out there that if I don't use Wago clamps, then I obviously don't need the holders, which goes without, without saying. Um, what do I have? I do. I can't remember how much spare cable length there was on this. If it was just the right length, then I don't know how much I want to risk cutting off. I'm not sure there is much spare length. I'm really nervous about cutting it short because obviously these were cut kind of to length for previous one. We might need all the extra length we can get. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. What shall I decide to do? Do we really need to? I can't, I can't imagine needing to take this off particularly regularly. Now, nah, stuff the Wegos, we don't need them. I've never taken the bit off so far. I can't imagine needing to again. But it looks like they'd be pretty easy to fit. I probably not even need glue. Oh, they don't even fit. Kind of fit. Uh. Nope, not using that. <laughs> Decision made. Don't think we need this. I think this is the alternative instead of this, isn't it? 
no idea what this is for. I think it goes here, does it not? If you want to do a different type. I think we're good with this. So, the other thing is this front cover. So we need a couple of M3 nuts, hex nuts for that. Let's zoom back in, shall we, to the closer view. spare screws and what I got plenty that I can use in three by six lots and lots of those oh there's quite a lot of m three by eights as well by the looks of it nice good job LDO for putting in loads of spares means we can mod away without having to worry about how many screws we've got left over Well, the, the reason I'd lose some length is obviously you lose maybe 11 mil or 10 mil that you crimp, that you um, strip rather. And obviously that's going into Wega, you lose another 11 mil, 10 mil coming out. So you can potentially lose 20 mil off the length of your cable, which could be the, far, the last 20 mil that I need to get to the control board. I don't exactly know how that's gonna be set up yet. So I think we're going to want to, um, actually we shouldn't need to uh, zip tie them much. Looks like there's going to be plenty of access there. Oh, is that what they call the belted Z? Z, Z, ah yes, I see. It's like this weird printed jag, drag. I have a lot of trouble saying drag. It ends up coming out as jag. Anyway, the drag chain. It's like a 3D printed drag chain. Any particular reason for bed springs over silicone spaces? I've not had any problems with bed springs and that's what came with the LDO kit. drag chain um, this end is going to here from here like here to here so these are going through here and let's take this end off
Never had this much trouble trying to get a bloody crimp terminal off. The belted Z, belted chain, well obviously the belted Z should, I mean by name, would replace the leash group with a belt, right? But in the 3D printing world, you never know what names people are going to give stuff. We call, I mean things like reverse Bowden and Bowden tube, and they don't really make any sense, but... We use them anyway. <laughs> there we go, cool. So that's the damage to through. Let's bring the label through as well. Come on. Get this pack on the turn to there. I want this cable to be as straight as possible pushing it through because if it's not, it'll end up catching lots as you try and thread it through. Look at that, easy. Lovely. Now we should also be able to attach this before we screw it on. It looks like this part of this here is for a, a uh, a zip tie, but can't see how you get your cables to there to use that to be honest. There we go. Oh, missing a bed nut. Where's that gone?
Right. It's looking pretty good bed-wise. I think we probably could have done with six mil screws at the front there because they're poking at the bottom of it and that's a bit annoying for this tightener, but it's a small thing. It's a small thing. Right, now we've got to decide what the next steps are. It's a bit of flex, but it's all in the actual frame, so. Forget what we're actually doing. So SKR Pico control board. So that's going to be obviously just in the back and then firmware and that sort of stuff. LGX light and the new rail. So that's obviously all still to be done. Sun on fans, top hat hinge. That's kind of towards the end. RGB LEDs towards the end. Rear door hinge. That's after the panels and the no drop nuts. We've not really used the no drop nuts much. Only a couple. Um, in the most essential positions, I suppose. Because I don't want to disassemble more than I absolutely have to. Because, you know, that would be a little bit of a pain. So, the next part... Let's get this end stop switch back in, I think. At least get those, that will get the nuts in the right position. It's going to be really difficult to do, I think. Is that going to be long enough? Don't think so. That's eight. What have we got this longer? That's twelve. That's probably way too long. This is 10, this seems right, so can we find another? Don't think there's another M3 by 10 here, that's unfortunate. Apart from that one, nice. What kind of time? This is a 20 past four time. YouTube suggested it's a good time. So, I'm giving it a go.
This almost is going to be easier to mount and then slide in, isn't it? Can't remember how I did it before. So as high as that goes. Yes. Right, so I think that's pretty good for the whole Z arrangement. Now, the belt scenario. I'm going to have to take this carriage off because the carriage for the LGX Lite is actually a completely different carriage. So this one has to be removed such that the new one then be fitted. You can't just replace the rail under it or anything like that, so. Oh, this. And now I've got the blooming <laughs> screw stuck on the end of the hex driver.
So let's reduce this belt tension. I'm going to have to replace the belts, there's no way I'm going to fiddle getting these in again. That was difficult enough the first time. The second time's only going to be more difficult. <laughs> They've actually stuck to the belts. Hopefully rerouting these is not going to be too difficult. I'll have to use these belts on a different project for something else, I think, because they're going to be... <laughs> Wrong size. Surprisingly long, actually. Hopefully I've bought enough. Oh. I think this is the right belt. Six mil, yep. So, the lesson learned from last time is to cut the belts longer than I need them by a good portion. New belt, old belt. Two old belts, new belt. Let's get the two new belts the same length at least. I literally only just bought enough, blimey. I thought I was gonna have loads spare. Thanks John, see you later, enjoy your work. So that's my new belts. Uh, let's replace this rail. So we've got some different rails. I ended up buying some and then they just kept arriving for some reason. Um, So we've got these two, these are kind of the same, kind of different. I think I had some more as well. The other ones are up there. I think those are, ooh. Um, I think I accidentally bought ones that were the wrong length carriage. So the wrong hole pattern. Yeah, that's a short carriage. And that's a different size rail. So I'm actually, I'm going to open them up, I think, and give them a little wipe down. What could possibly go wrong? Probably quite a lot.
nicely zoomed in, isn't it? A little bit this way, I think. So this one looks like it's going to be a stainless steel rail because it doesn't seem to be. There's basically no lubrication on that. This looks very much identical to the LVO one. So the problem I had with the LDO one uh, was that the carriage on the on the uh, thing was kind of rocking like this. So with the extruder carriage mounted like that, it could kind of rock like this, back and, back and forwards. Yeah. It's very difficult to detect by hand before you've assembled it, because it's literally the very tiniest amount of play. If I hold these two next to each other, uh, they're very slightly different. This one's got no grease on it because it's stainless steel, so... Let's take a look inside. Yes, this is still binding a little bit. It was quite well made though, the uh, things are straight, the bars are straight, I think with a bit of lubrication it could be quite good. These are actually pretty good as they are, I think. I'm not sure I want to mess around with this too much. Uh, I need a pointy thing. I think these are going to be okay. Um, let me get, I'm going to actually put these plates back on and then we're going to add some lubricant, force them a little bit more.
got some lubricant pre-prepared in a tube. So we can hopefully use that to... I feel like this grease is probably a little bit too viscous for these very small bearings, but... Uh, no, so very small linear rails often don't. I mean, it has, it looks like it does, but it doesn't actually go anywhere, I don't think. The larger ones do, but the smaller ones often don't, unfortunately. Might be wrong. I just know the, the LDO ones didn't, so I assumed these wouldn't either. God, I don't know how much of this you can see, it's blooming tiny, isn't it? Yeah, you can see it doesn't go anywhere. So it would be in the middle. But you can see it's just, there's no hole.
So you do have to be very careful with these small because they can jump out as you force them back in. Should have put it on the small carriage first. Let's do that. I've not had it happen with larger rails, this. But with these little ones. As you push them back in, all the little bearings jump out of their positions. There you go, that's two just come straight out there. Three, in fact, it's one here too. Come on. Hopefully slide this under here without too much trouble. There we go. I can't detect any play in that, so I think I'm going to go with that one and ignore that one. Just because it's super oily and it'll be horrible to deal with anyway, so. And we didn't lose any balls. I'm pretty hopeful that this rail will be all right. We've got the other one, just in case. And we can give it a try now, actually. We do need them right out, don't we? So probably should have kept the gloves on for doing this because this rail is going to be greasy and nasty.
So you can see actually how similar these two rails are. I mean, if you didn't have a... My, oh, it's really hurting. Sorry. So that's the LDO one. You can see it says LDO on it. Other than that, it's pretty difficult to tell apart. The hole sizes look a bit different, so hopefully these screws fit okay. I think they're a closer fit, if anything, so that's probably good. Yeah, they're, I don't know, look about the same. I think these ones are just chamfered, maybe. Anyway. Let's get this up here. So we need some spacers. I think I kept the ones that I used before. Get the camera in the right place. <laughs> hmm, that's weirdly tight. Okay, that's what. Right. Luckily, the spacing for these holes seems to be a set standard, so they're all lining up just fine. It's not MGN9, no. The only reason I did it, I was going to, but I wanted to do um, LGX Lite more than I wanted to do the MGN9, and that design is for 7, uh, so I just stuck with the 7. Definitely a bit more pretension on this one than the LDO one, but it's looking pretty good, I think. Right, time for another short uh, couple of minutes uh, sponsor segment. This video is sponsored by Big Tree Tech, Bontech, and Printy Please. The SKR Pico is a brand new control board from Big Tree Tech that, despite its tiny size, packs quite the punch. 
making it an ideal fit for a small form factor 3D printer like the Voron V0.1. A Raspberry Pi RP2040 chip is used as the main controller with TMC2209 stepper drivers for the X, Y, Z and E axis with two plugs to support dual Z printers. The built-in heatsink gives a computer motherboard kind of styling and helps to cool the drivers a little bit too. Clipper has been considered in the design as well. A TPS5450 gives up to 5 amps continuous current at 5 volts for a Raspberry Pi and the included cable makes for easy installation via UART. There's also a replaceable fuse, thermistor short circuit protection, Japanese Murata capacitors, USB-C, and it matches the Raspberry Pi's footprint. You can get yours or find out more by the link in the description. The LGX Lite is a tiny new extruder from Bontech, which implements their large gear design to provide increased filament grip. On the top, the filament pretension lever provides consistent and repeatable filament engagement, while the open sides gives access to all the gears, allowing for easy maintenance. Four mounting patterns using M3 nuts provides plenty of mounting options, so its compact, light design and use of NEMA 14 stepper motor make it a great contender for direct drive on high-performance 3D printers. Find your local reseller via the link in the description. UK-based Printy Please specialises in parts and upgrades for 3D printers like the Voron V0 and 2.4. The Kirigami bed, Sunon fans, titanium backers and spherical bearings are just some examples of the range of specialist parts available. Check out their shop via the link below. Alright. What's next then? I guess it's all these belts and such, isn't it? I do actually want to add some more nuts into here. I don't think we're going to get many opportunities to do that. So now might be my only chance. <laughs> If a chance at all, I'm not sure. Should need a lot of movement. I just want to put, I think it's three nuts in the side here. Yes, that's enough. Okie dokie. So. I think it's three. I've got these handles, I know it's four. Nice. Easy peasy. So now we've got enough nuts to hopefully mount this appropriately. I think it goes in here. It's going to need some. Oh, let's do this because this is satisfying. <laughs> like magic.
before and after. It makes such a big difference. That's what it looks like before, that's what it looks like after. Incredible. Print quality on this one's a little bit dodgy actually, I don't think these are off the same printer. Yeah, they're definitely not. The residue is not a residue, it's, um, it's just stress marks from where the, well, I know it's stress marks. I'm pretty sure the reason they're there is because the bed is resisting uh, that material's kind of warping. So it's just stress in the material. The same as when you like bend plastic and it goes white, it's just the same thing. So it's stress marks in the material and you just relieve the stress by heating it and it Relieves the stress. If you're not careful, it does warp the part as well, so you can't overdo it. But gets okay, questions every time I do that. So satisfying though. Right, what do we do? I feel really tired today. It's difficult to concentrate. We were doing the rails, weren't we? Belts, belts for LGX. Cut some belts, now we need to melt some belts. Hello, Jamie 3D Prints. Right. Ah, before we do this, we're probably gonna to have to put some heated, threaded what's it certs in, so we need to do that. Interestingly, I don't actually know how this goes together, so... <laughs> Shall be a voyage of discovery.
Cool. I don't think we need to do much more than that, to be honest. These. There is a bit of wobble, but it doesn't really matter. Oops, there is it. Now, I suspect if we were using the old motor, we could get away with the original ones of these rather than these, which I'm guessing are slightly longer, because it's a slightly longer motor. Of course, we are using the longer motor, so we need longer standoff things for the cable management. Now I've squished the end a little bit. Hang on, I thought you said you were going to work. <laughs> I've not been here seven and a half or eight hours. Two hours and five minutes in fact. I just need to go shut down Fusion in the other room because I'm going to need it here, I think, for some assembly guidance. Uh, where is it? Oh no, it's already closed. Okay, okay. Don't have to do that. Let's get this back up on the bench. That's blooming close. Let's Infusion 360 so we can take a look. Oh yeah. Thank you. I get so many bots these days, it's ridiculous. I think I loaded this into Fusion earlier. Hopefully this allows us to take a look quickly. No. <laughs> okay, I'll have to go download it. 
that's not ideal in the middle of a stream, is it? LGX light or on V0. Huh? Yeah, today is the kind of work day where you just watch my stream and don't do much. <laughs> yeah, that was my kind of work day. <laughs> it's not going to be done today. We've got ages. I'll be doing maybe another 45 minutes-ish, maybe 30, 45 minutes. Um, but there's still loads to do. We've got loads of firmware and we've not even got to electronics again yet. So lots and lots and lots to do. Just load and then I'll uh, I'll share the screen so you can see what the plan is. It goes a bit slower when I'm streaming at the same time because everything obviously gets a little bit occupied. Come on, there we go. Right. Mm, second screen. So first thing first, I'm just going to rotate the whole lot so that it's in an appropriate direction that makes sense to me. So that's the motor. That's the PTFE cutting jig. I'm not sure why that's part of the assembly. Extra hot ends. Mosquito, copperhead, dragon. Then mounts. Dragon, copperhead, copperhead, mosquito, mosquito. And C3007 fan. Uh, this is a clippy thing. Clicky Pro, brother, I think, isn't it? So, don't really need that. These are very thick fans. They're 10 mil fans. We're going to have 7 mil fans. Oh, no, we're not. We have those as well, apparently. Okay, so this is pretty similar, I think. That goes into that. Oh, these are longer screws then. Those are not the standard screws. Uh, we'll put the... So, let's do that. What else is there? What other mounting holes? It doesn't use other mounting holes on the LGX, does it? Oh no, these. They look like they're being... How are they screwing up into that? How the Dickens bananas? Okay, I'm just going to put all the screws in because... I oh know, it's probably... 
those two, okay. I might as well put them all in. If I put them all in, then I can't miss one, right? That's... <laughs> Otherwise, no matter what I put in, I'm bound to get it wrong. And uh, no, this is all the designs from, uh, directly from Bontech. Well, I think they had some help from someone. Uglaf Uglund or Olaf. <laughs> Let's get the name. If you go, if you Google it, you'll, you'll find it. This. But yes, this is not my design. I'm merely utilizing it. I use the one that comes with the, uh, this. The ones that comes with the LGX Lite. Because it's the uh, longer 20 mil version. I talked about it a little bit last stream and it was suggested that I use the longest one possible. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna try and do. Uh, I'm gonna be a bit careful here. This one's quite difficult to force in any further. What else can I use to push it? Because I don't want to put too much force on this. What if I put this on here? That's a bit better. Yeah, I think we can thread into all of those. That's that one. There's that one, there's that one. This one's a bit weird. I think this one could be pushed in a little bit further. Two on the side as well. Yeah, heated inserts are really good, but they can pull out a little bit too easily. That's This is a really surefire way like this. This is great. I mean, obviously all of these nuts is a tiny bit of added weight, but I'm happy with that. I do like how easy this is to disassemble and reassemble. That's, that's quite nice. It looks like we get one spare nut. So we've also got a trimming tool. Ah, 
excuse me. I think we use it in combination with this or something. Tunnels seem a little bit on the tight side for something that's literally just a jig. Oh my god. A jig that once you put the part in, you can't get it sodding out again. <laughs> Blooming hell. Right, let's open this hole a little bit. It should be four mil OD, so if we do like 4.2, that should be plenty, I think. But this is greasy as hell. Bye, Ryan. <laughs> so this is obviously where the hot end is going to mount to. Ah, this goes down into here, so. I think we might need something a little bit longer. So this piece of tube that came with the LGX is not, I guess we can use that at the top or something. So we need something else for, for this. Go find a piece of tube. Oh, before we do that, let's tidy up what we just did. Should have some PTFE tube laying around. I want to use a pretty small piece really because longer pieces, obviously, once you cut them down, 
They're never long ever again. Best to use a short piece and make it shorter. So this I think will do. First we'll just trim the ends. Yeah, a little bit better. I'd always recommend um, cutting with a knife rather than with um, grippy things. I sh look, if you cut with this, although it's probably quite sharp, it just absolutely mangles the end of the tube. Uh, whereas if you do the same thing with a knife, it just cuts straight through and keeps it nice and round. And it doesn't want to focus. There you go. So yeah. Use a knife, not side cutters, for cutting PTFE tube. If we assemble this now into here, wrong way. Oh, there we go. That's how that should fit on there, I think. Get them all compressed. And then presumably we use a knife in this little gap here. And cut the thing off. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy. Now, take that off. That's the jig done. It's quite a big thing for just a jig. It's maybe a bit over the top, but... Nice, nice, nice. Um... Not too worried about ADXL stuff at the moment. We'll do that at the end if I end up doing it. So how the hell does this work? How does it screw up into the LGX? And so this must go in afterwards. What? <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, the hot end must be fitted with this part. After that, but how does this screw go through that? No, see, it doesn't. Oh, it does, here. How you can't? Ah, what?
Are you able to say updates on the extruder or hot end flow testing? I'll tell you this, I've found more stuff and it's super awesome, but I'm not going to tell you any more than that. You attach the hot end. Oh, thank you for being here. I'm so happy. Uh, attach the hot end to the hot end mount and LGX to the cowling. Okay, so let's start by attaching this to here because this definitely has to happen. So what screw is suggested here? Is it M3s or M2s on this? That's not M3, is it? That's M2. Okay. M2 V8s. Is that these? That's M2 by 6. Um, M2 by 8. Is that these? Yes. 2. Three of those. Um, uh, which side should I put the um, heater and thermistor coming out of? If I say, So that's going against, that face there is going where the LGX is, isn't it? No, that's the other way around. That is where the LGX is on that face. Oh, is that what, what are these two gaps for at the back? Bit of screw head clearance maybe. So I had it coming out that way. That's good. Does not seem to be working. It's long enough, so why the dickens is it not engaging? This is not the right thread, is it? No. M2.5, where did I put those? Oh dear. What has one done with those? Ooh, is that one? That's one. Does that go through there? 
No, it was too short. Yeah, I think the original ones were M2.5 by 6 then. Because this is the only M2.5 that I have, I think. 6. Let's check in this bag of bits. Let's spare. Self tapping for all oh, this could be helpful. Two point five by six. Just notice there's a brass tube in here. Is this supposed to be shoved down the end of this hot end? These look like the right thing. Yes. Yes. Correct length and everything. Only need three though. Have we got this? Oh no, it's not a. It's not the tube. What on earth is that for? Oh, that's like a bead thermistor cartridge thing, isn't it? That's what it's for. Not going to do that. That would be a little bit backwards. Okay. So, we're doing heat and thermistor on the left from the front. So that is going on that. Let's go out the right way. That direction. So the ones in that kit, I think, were the ones that came with the Dragonfly. They were eight, but the ones that I had used were only six. So the ones that worked for the AB didn't work for this. Poor storage container that ended up having over 80 mosquito hot ends. <laughs> <laughs> what a bizarre start. I don't think people really do that in the UK. They might do, I'm not sure. Um, That can't mount to that on its own, can it? So we then have to do cowling bits. So, where's that? Cowling. So, I'm going to be working on the assumption that this is going to be basically the same as the original, this bottom half. Virtually unchanged, hopefully. No, that's right. Gotta put this one in first, haven't we?
Dull, damn it. Let's rotate it around. How am I going to show this? It's too, I feel like I'm not demonstrating very well just because it's so small. <laughs> My pile of tools is just on the desk. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this obviously sits in here. Need the other fans in first, but this should. Ooh, does the big fat part of the block need to be pointing? Okay, it's pointing backwards and mine is pointing forwards, so that's the wrong way round. Can you do that? Yeah. Oh, that's got to go all the way down there. Okay, okay. Well, that's not going to fit, is it? Because that's not going to get caught in there. That's not what I want to do. But that's not going to. I'm just going to go straight out the bottom then. There we go. Trez fan. It's my best French.
Is that out the right way? Yep. But how does this, that's got a, okay, <laughs> this is so confused. The suggestion, because you've got to do this next, haven't you? So do you need to put the LGX, you do, because it's, whoa, this is confusing. Okay. So the key now is going to make sure that this all still moves nice and smoothly. Hi Nitrum, Nitrum. Which is the best direction to put this? Oh, that's not fitting quite right. Having some alignment issues here. That's very. I think this hole needs a bit of enlargement. Feels quite stiff. Didn't think it was quite that stiff before. Jason! Thank you very much for the five dollars. Uh, it's Pavel that designed Ever. He's best found on the Rat Rig unofficial Discord if you want to get in touch. So this is not going to be long enough, so we need some longer screws. Uh, these ones look very long. Do we have some from the kit? Oh, damn, it's nearly three hours already. Oh, that's way too long. How long are these? 25, so we probably want 30.
put this carriage on the Oh. Uh, X carriage to block. What are you calling block? X carriage. What? Yeah, these two are coming together. If I can work out <laughs> the order of assembly for this, because I am not understand it. Yes, this will block this, but I can take the motor off because the screws go to the front, but I can't hold this together. I suppose I don't need to put this on, do I? Because the LGX is pretty easy to assemble right on top. That's what he's saying, I think. Am I getting that? It says LGX, you can just kind of let it fall apart and it's easy to put back together. So I only need this piece to assemble this lot together. This looks like it's much longer than it needs to be now. Oh, I think it might be a smidgen too long. I think we'll. Uh, Oh, be careful, we're going to ruin the fan cables if we're not. I'm going to take a fraction of a millimetre off of this. There we go. Now we can screw this onto here. This is M3. Um, what length do we want? That's the question. That looks like a good length. No, oh, that's probably a bit long. Oh, we've got lots of M3 by 8, wouldn't it? Let's see. Oh, how did that come off? That's weird. It's the first time I've seen that come off. Even when I try to pull it off, it doesn't come off. That is actually not long enough. M3 by 8, too short. So let's have a rummage. It looks like the LGX is going to be quite forgiving. It looks like there's a bunch of 12s. Got some 10s too. Oh, did it? Is the camera all right? It doesn't normally lose focus. So 10s are just going to the edge of the screw, so I reckon 12 is going to be the best bet here. And 3 by 10, not quite.
I think I'm doing this right now, aren't I? Hopefully, anyway. That looks pretty steadily mounted. Now we put this in here. Oh, PTFE tube. Yeah, if I had a camera person, they would probably be doing that, but I don't. I can only, and I adjust the camera quite a lot. If I did that every time, we'd spend the whole, oh, my thing's not going in probably now. How did that go wonky? I'm going to put it in this end, I think that'll be easier. There we go. Come on, why are we not going in now? Please, please. Oh, this is quite difficult. Okay. Oh, that's why, because these two cables both do the same thing, don't they? Let's tuck them under there like that. Yeah, it does seem to be way too long, this tube now. What's going to be a good way to check that depth properly? The tube. Is it because of the alignment here? It's not going into the LGX body. Oh, have I put it on back to front? That would explain a few things, wouldn't it? Oh no, I've used the wrong holes. Oh dear. Try again. Nobody mentioned that, right? That never happens. We won't talk about that. <laughs> we'll just pretend I use the right holes first. Oh, okay, well these. These screws are now too long for this one. So we're going back to the 10 mil screws.
Yeah, everything went fine the first time. That's exactly, you got it. That's exactly what happened. I don't know why anyone would just make up lies about anything different. There you go, look, first time. Perfect length screw, right hole, easy peasy. Yay! First time! <laughs> cool, they go in as well. Muy fantastico. Oh, but how does... That's this side, isn't it? Right, we've made it to three hours, so I think we're gonna stop here actually, and we'll carry on with uh, finishing off Fontex, the LGX light at the beginning of the next time, because it went the first time so well that we can just carry on with it next time, and then we'll start off doing everything right first time at the beginning of the next stream too. Amazing. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that was kind of confusing. It doesn't seem quite square in there for some reason. I think maybe that tube could be a little bit shorter still. Anyway, I think it's time to say goodbye. Uh, Next live stream, I'm actually planning to do one again tomorrow, um, Saturday. So we can make really good progress with this. We don't want to leave you hanging ages and ages between one build and the next. One build. One pro, pro, like stage, that's the one. One stage and the next. So yeah, we'll carry on. Obviously we'll fit this and do belts and all kinds of stuff tomorrow. I think I've got everything we need, so yeah. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for everyone who left super chats and that sort of stuff, very kind of you. What time tomorrow? Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet. It'll either be 3 p.m. or 7 p.m. Depends what, I'll probably do another 3 p.m. It works really well for me because then it's, trouble with 7 p.m. is it just interrupts when I normally would eat. So I end up eating really early and then being hungry later and all this kind of stuff. Doesn't really matter for you, but anyway, whatever. That's <laughs> This time works quite well for me because it's kind of a good end to the day. Yeah, hopefully this has been useful for anyone looking to do some modifications. Don't forget to uh, check out the links below for Big Tree Tech. Bontech and Printy Please, specifically for these things, but obviously for other stuff as well. So yeah, thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. If you join in, if not, I'll see you some other time. Goodbye. I've lost the button. I'll find it eventually, and then I can actually go. <laughs> right. Goodbye.